go over the floor plan and some um, details about the Heart of Texas Fair and Rodeo and kind of coming at it as if you um, maybe haven't been there before, don't know a lot of information. So I'm going to be going over a lot of the basics. And then at the end, I'll open it up for question and answer if you have any. Um, so and after we finish this, I'll post the slides and a recording of this online so you can reference it. So don't worry about writing every single little thing down because you can download it after the uh, meeting is over. So it's October 6th through the 16th. It is a 10 day market. Um, and yes, you are required to be there for all 10 days of the market. Uh, there are various times for each day. Um, oh, Snoon is a new time. I'll get that updated. Um, but basically on the weekdays, we're only open in the evening, generally about 4 to 10 p.m. And then on the weekends, it's noon to 11 p.m. One thing that I want to say we learned from last year is you don't want to be the person that's like it's 9.55 and I'm going to walk out the door. Um, do you realize that the concerts still go on for one hour after the market closes? So it's not like everybody has left. There will still be shoppers in the building. And we, along with security, have to push all those shoppers out um, and then actually lock the building. So um, rodeos have this rodeo has about 250,000 attendees who come. So theft can be an issue. I'm not going to lie. Um, petty theft, little pickpocketing. So the one thing you don't want to do is make yourself a target by being the first one to leave while there's still shoppers in the building. And typically at that closing time is when we would have, you know, the theft issues come up because again, booths are unattended. So just keep that in mind. You're not going to want to be the first one to leave. You'll probably be there 15 to 20 minutes after closing time. The event itself is held at the Extraco Event Center. Um, it's really a cool event. Um, it's very well established in the area. It's been going on for about 65 years. So it's everything you would think of with a fair and rodeo. They do have um, the actual rodeo, livestock, bull riding, barrel racing, all of that good stuff, um, an ag show the midway with the rides they're very much known for their fair food which is a lot of the you know like fried foods and um turkey legs funnel cakes all that kind of stuff people really come to this event to get their fix on the fair food um and then of course the shopping market the vendor market which is this is the second year that big top has been doing the big shopping expo with them our event is all inside in a brand new really beautiful building and then just to give you kind of a, a visual of where Waco and where the event is located, it's just outside of downtown Waco. Um, and it's, I believe it's about a two hour drive from North Houston where I'm located. So it's not too bad. Now here is the floor plan. And so this is kind of the big view where you can see outside and inside. So if you were to park most customers are parking over in this area. There's a big field here and that's where exhibitors are parking as well. Then they'll walk. This is the front of the building of the base where we are located and the front of the event. There's some VIP parking down here, um, closer parking that's paid. And then where it says gate and gate, this is the entrance gate and this is the exit gate. So most, a majority of the attendees of the fair and rodeo will be coming through this gate. So we get a shot at 100% almost of the traffic as they enter and as they exit. Um, Homestown stage here, this is a stage where you have a lot of community groups, um, dance teams, drill teams, local bands, things like that, and they play regularly throughout the day here on the hometown stage. These three purple DHQ booths, these are boutique trucks and trailers. So if you're wanting to bring a truck or a trailer, we have three spaces available. And then DH1, 2, and 3 are 10 by 20 outdoor booths. Um, you can bring your own tent or we can coordinate to have a tent provided for you at an additional fee. Um, and we can bring out 10 by 20 tents. So right here where it says entrance, entrance, entrance. This is the main and really the only entrance into the base building where the big top shopping pavilion will be located. So 100% of your traffic into the market will be coming in from this way. 
Um, we have the children's artwork. If you've ever been to the Houston Rodeo, it's very similar to the, the Houston Rodeo art program. Um, and so they'll have displays there. Now I do know, and I really thought that I had, okay, it's the next slide. Um, the next slide has which booths are already spoken for. Um, so we do have a couple in this section, which is definitely the highest traffic, medium traffic, and the least traffic. And you can see how they're color coded. We did that intentionally. So your pink, purple um, booths are going to be premium pricing. So they are a little bit more expensive, but because you are getting front of house, you're getting more traffic. And I'm telling you from experience here that that is where you wanna be. You do wanna be in a premium placement if you can. If you're not really sure if the rodeo is right for you and you're trying it out for the first time, then you might go with the standard placement, which is further in the room. So you do have to imagine people have to walk all the way over here. It's a little bit less traffic. Um, but again, we've adjusted it with the savings. Um, and then Farm Bureau, that's a big display by a Farm Bureau insurance company. And um, it's very interactive, like kids area. Um, there's a kid zone over here with different games and, and such that they bring in. And then we'll also have like a race car um, game going on probably up in this area. Another thing that's new this year are these BA one, two, three, and four down here, the turquoise. Um, we would like to invite Texas based wineries to come in so they can do free samples, promote their wineries, and we can have Texas wine nights to drive some additional traffic to the event, especially on the, um, the non weekend nights. Let me just go back to the schedule quick and kind of tell you a little bit about the traffic flow. So just like everything, weekends are always going to have higher traffic just in general because of people's lifestyles. Um, so usually Thursday, Friday, especially Saturday and Sunday, those are going to be our very heavy traffic flow days. Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday tend to be lighter in traffic, a little bit slower. Um, however, a lot of that does depend on the concert. Um, they do bring in well-known you know, people that you would hear on the radio. It's not just like local acts. Um, and the one thing we love about the rodeo is they're very open to ideas, feedback, um, all the good things. So we noticed last year we had a Thursday um, where I believe the performer was, was Tracy Allen? Tracy Lawrence. Tracy Lawrence um, was the performer on a Thursday and that ended up being one of the highest volume sales nights for everybody in the market. Um, and so we passed that along to the rodeo and you could just tell, I mean, you could just tell at the beginning of the night, people were dressed really nice. They had their Western shirts on, they were pressed. Um, they really dressed up to come to the rodeo that night, opposed to on other nights where it would be, you know, casual t-shirts and shorts. Um, and so we passed it on to the rodeo. And so they've tried to find more artists this year that align with that demographic. So we can bring in, um, you know, the people who really want to spend money to the rodeo. So um, just keep that in mind. And so that's what we're trying to do with the wineries is bring in some other things that can get people excited about coming out to the rodeo during the weekdays on the slower nights. These little tables down here, these turquoise, um, these are just going to be like lounge tables because everyone at these big events is always looking for a place to sit down. We are, I believe we are the only air conditioned building in the rodeo. Even I'm pretty sure that the Coliseum where they have the rodeo is not air conditioned. It just has fans. Um, so we also have the only like indoor bathrooms. The Coliseum does have indoor bathrooms as well where the rodeo is, but we're one of the only places that has indoor bathrooms. So we want to promote that as well to get people to come in. Now here is kind of the work in progress, the whip of who signed up and where they are right now. So we do have these five spaces available here at the front. Those are prime locations. Like once those are gone, those are gone. This whole block is really honestly, if you had a first choice on where you wanna be, that would be it. Um, I'm gonna check on this AB6. I didn't have time because I thought that, I saw that one got sold, but it didn't come up on my report this morning. Um, and then here, the middle section, this is great because you do have bathrooms here. So if someone comes in, they can go around the hallway and they can enter the bathrooms this way. This will be a concession stand by the rodeo. Um, the concept that they're thinking of right now is very similar to the, um, like what you would find at Starbucks. So cold sandwiches, cold salads, things that are ready to go and you can just grab and go. 
candy bars, I'm sure chips and drinks. So we'll also have the concession here and then we'll have the wineries to help pull into this middle section here. And then uh, this side will be more of, like I said, the race cars, the kids zone. And these are the standard price booths. So they are, like I said, a little bit cheaper. <clears throat> Now, um, this year, pipe and drape, black pipe and drape, and electricity is included in the price for everyone, so you don't have to worry about getting an upgrade on that. However, you guys know how strongly I feel about is displays, exhibitor booth displays. So this is just a backdrop um, really to help divide booths and to help with line of sight. So I still strongly encourage everyone to bring their own custom backdrops, to bring their full setups and displays. Um, we have an entire Pinterest board dedicated to vendor display ideas, places where you can buy ready-made items, um, different displays, and also DIYs if you're crafty, DIY display ideas. So I recommend you can go to Big Top dot show slash blog so big top dot show slash blog and you can look for our display zoom meeting that was last week the recording is up the pinterest link is there i also link you to a bunch of places where you can purchase um, display items that i recommend because i'm telling you guys display is 50 percent of your sales so if you want to double your sales this year let's step up the game on display and i guarantee you you'll be successful all right, exhibitor parking. Um, so everyone will be given one free pass, uh, basically per registration, right? So one pass per exhibitor space. Um, and that will get you free parking for the entirety of the event. Um, we park with customers, okay, in a general parking lot. So that pass gets you free into the lot, but it does not get you like pre-assigned space or anything like that. So again, it's like if you show up, five minutes before the market and the rodeo opens, you are going to be, you know, probably in the middle of the parking lot with all of the customers. If you want that front row parking, the least amount of walking, then I recommend you show up on time. You show up early 30 to 45 minutes before we open. So that way you can get parked in a very close spot. You can walk into the building. You can get yourself opened up and relaxed and you're not scrambling because you only gave yourself five minutes to get into the building. Um, additional exhibitor passes are available. They are discounted, um, so you don't have to pay per day. You can buy a whole, what they call a season pass, and that'll get you parking for the entirety of the event. I don't really remember off the top of my head or know what the price will be this year, but I believe it was somewhere between like $25 and $40 for that parking pass last year. And then if you have a cargo trailer um, for storage, there is a parking lot just dedicated to trailer parking at the rodeo, because again, they do have all the ag and all of the rodeo, um, you know, horse trailers, cow trailers, all of that. Um, and so it does have lights and it does have security. So you can bring your trailer and leave it for the entirety of the event. Lodging. I highly recommend if you're like, I'm going to do the Heart of Texas Fair and Rodeo, book your lodging now. Um, you would be surprised, but lodging in Waco, it fills up very fast. You have um, the rodeo, of course, 250,000 people are coming to the rodeo. Um, a lot of them are from Waco, but a lot come from surrounding smaller towns um, that could be like two hours away. And so they might want to stay the night um, that they're going to the rodeo in town then you have the magnolia you know store and restaurant and all of that which brings a lot of out of towners into town and then you also have all the sports with baylor and i'm telling you every time we've gone to waco whether it's in march july october december there's always a graduation going on i don't know how they have so many graduates every single month the school is graduating and the sports teams um i think last year when we were there in april it was like march madness was going on and they were in the finals um so long story short get on top of your lodging because it does book up quick if you wait until the week before the show you might be staying like an hour an hour and a half outside of waco um on the website we have three or four exhibitor blocks discount blocks that have been approved so you can go through the website i believe the cheapest one that we have right now is 110 dollars um but again they're first come first serve once they book up they're booked up um, another thing people did last year is if you have an RV, that's a great option. Um, there are several offsite RV parts where you can get your hookups and be close by, and that's very affordable. 
Most places it's 30 to $40 a night for the hookups. Um, we actually rented an RV from rvshare.com and um, you can have it delivered for you. You don't even have to haul it. They'll do all the hookups for you. And then when you're done, they'll come and pick it up. And that's a great option. Also, um, we found when we priced it out last year, it was about half the cost for us to rent an RV than to stay in a hotel. Plus you have, you know, like a small kitchen and a refrigerator so you can get um, some meals at the grocery store and you don't have to eat out every single meal for 10 days. So it's great. Um, and you can always try to find an exhibitor buddy. If that's something you guys are interested in, send us an email or message. We can try to do maybe some matchmaking. If you guys want to share rooms or something, we can see if there's a few people who want to share rooms and just connect you guys and you guys figure it out. Um, and then Airbnb is always an option, but what I learned last year, because several exhibitors did do Airbnbs is just make sure you do your research before you book it, um, get the address, look at it online, do your little crime report. Like if you were going to be moving there, um, do some satellite pictures from Google because Waco is an older town. Um, so a lot of the homes, neighborhoods, buildings are very much from the sixties and seventies. And it's not the prettiest place to look at. I'm not going to lie. So um, just make sure that somewhere you would feel comfortable staying and make sure that the neighborhood is a neighborhood you would feel comfortable staying in. Just do your research. Marketing updates. So some of the marketing plans, um, different activities that we have going on this year is the wine tasting nights, like I said. Um, entrance signage is huge. Last year was our first year doing the rodeo. Um, and Although they did have some signs for us, they weren't like, wow, popping. Um, they were very like black and white and kind of, you know, boring. Um, and so I'm really excited with the sign that I'm going to show you in a minute um, that we're working on right now. And then, of course, website and social media. Big Top will be promoting and advertising as well as um, the Heart of Texas Rodeo will be promoting and advertising on their website and social media. And then um, the Extra Coast Show Pavilion, that's where the agriculture exhibits are going on and the rodeo. They will be doing announcements throughout the day um, mentioning the Big Top Shopping Pavilion. So saying, saying where we are, how they can find us and what's going on in our building. Because again, this is even new for the rodeo that's been established for 65 years. Um, they had a very small shopping market with about 20 exhibitors. Um, and last year was the first year for Big Top to come in and we had over a hundred exhibitors. So it's a new thing that we're trying to get promoted in the rodeo. So everybody knows where it is. Everyone looks forward to it. And they know that when they come to the rodeo, they can also get some shopping done. So this is the world premiere of people seeing this sign. Um, it was under lock and key because the rodeo um, was trying to secure sponsors to help pay for it because this type of signage is very expensive. Um, but the last they told me that they were able to secure a sponsor. So it all was a go. So I'm on a limb here thinking that I can go ahead and share this. Keep in mind, this is a mock-up, so it's probably not going to look exactly like this, but it'll give you an idea. And I'm so really excited about it. So this is, oh, it looks kind of blurry when I blew it up this big, but anyhow, you get the idea. This is the entrance. So when I showed you on the map and it said entrance, 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 this is what I'm talking about here. Um, over here, if you could see, it would be like the main gate where people come in. And then right here, these parking spots are where the boutique trucks and trailers will be parked. So 100% of the traffic coming in through these gates are going to be walking right on by. And we're going to have these beautiful... Um, and they're like scaffolding banners they're called. And so basically they're going to look like the entrance of the building. And then this beautiful hot shops is their new sign. And I love it. And they already have these little character guys, um, fiberglass character guys. So we're going to get those out there as well. And I just think it's going to be great. So I'm very excited about that. Um, registration is open right now online. Bigtop.show slash Waco October is where you can see the map. You can see what spaces are available. You can see pricing. You can register online, as well as those hotel blocks and some additional details about all of the lodging. Um, all of the links are available at this week, this link. So bigtop.show slash Waco October. And guys, that is my presentation on the Heart of Texas Fair and Rodeo. So we have a couple of people who are on with us live. So I'm going to um, allow you to unmute if anyone has 
any specific questions, now is the time to ask. And if you do not have any questions, then um, we can wrap up and go on our merry way and I will get this loaded online. So if you have a question, now's the time, shout it out. All right, guys. Well, if there are no questions, we'll go ahead and wrap up. I'll get this loaded on the website and send it out to everyone. If you do have questions, feel free to reach out. Um, you know how to get a hold of us, social media, Big Top Entertainment, our email address, info at bigtop.show. And you can always call our office as well, 936-900-1900. I look forward to seeing all of you guys at the next event and especially at the Heart of Texas Fair and Rodeo. Signing off now. Have a great day.